Next, we're going to look at <clears throat> molecular geometries or using Vesper. And we're going to look at shapes with lone parallel when, with lone parallel with shapes of molecules when there are lone pairs of electrons present within the molecule. Now, before we start this, what I'm going to do is is give you a, a, um, is is define a couple of terms that I'm going to use to help us understand the geometries of these things. The first is going to be the electron pair geometry. And, and the second would be the molecular geometry. Okay. The electron pair geometry of, the, of a molecule takes into account all the pairs of the electrons in the molecule. Oops, let me move that over a bit. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so the electron pair geometry takes into account all of the pairs of electrons in the molecule. Whereas, and, and so for example, I'm gonna bring something up that we just looked at last time. This is from last time. We had, for example, when we had BF3, <clears throat> we would have a trigonal planar geometry. Now, the electron pair geometry, there are three electron pairs in that, in that, around that central atom, would be trigonal planar. So that's what I mean by electron pair geometry. Now, with, it takes into account all the pairs of electrons in the molecule. Now, this could include bonding and non-bonding pairs. We'll see soon how that can change. Or sorry, it takes into account all the electron pairs. So this is this is non-bonding and bonding pairs. The molecular geometry takes into account the positions of the atoms only. So in the example I just gave you, if we look back, this is from the previous lecture, BF3, the electron pair geometry, we have three electron pairs around the central atom, and the molecular geometry would be the same because we have three electron pairs and they are all happen to be bonding pairs of electrons, the positions of the atoms or the, or the bonding pairs. Okay, let's let, just to, to illustrate a little bit better about the, the differences, let's look at, for example, methane, CH4, and ammonia, NH3. If we were going to write the best Lewis structure for methane, it would look like this. Okay. In this case, what would be the shape of that molecule? So the electron pair geometry would be tetrahedral. We have four places we're putting electrons around that central atom. That means it's a tetrahedral electron pair geometry. The molecular geometry The molecular geometry would also be tetrahedral, right? Here, all of the, it just so happens that all of the uh, electron pairs are bonding pairs of electrons. If that's the case, then we'd have molecular, molecular geometry and electron pair geometry being the same. Let's contrast that with the ammonia molecule, where we have one lone pair of electrons and three bonding pairs of electrons. Now, the electron pair geometry of this molecule, we simply ask ourselves, how many electron pairs are there? Well, there are four. It's the same as, um, as methane in that case. So the electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. The molecular geometry, on the other hand, 
couldn't be tetrahedral because here we're only taking into account with molecular geometry the position of the atoms. Since this is the case, it's going to be different and we're going to call this trigonal pyramidal, for example. Now we're going to look at all of the different cases in a moment. But the point here is that the electron pair geometry takes into account all of the pairs of electrons. They're, they have the same electron pair geometry, but the molecular geometries of these two molecules are different. <clears throat> let's first look at cases where we have, where we have, um, so, so we're, let's look at molecules. Um, containing non-bonding or lone pairs of electrons. And let's look at the shapes. So if we have four pairs of electrons within the molecule, we already saw in the example I just gave so this has four pairs of electrons. The electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. With ammonia as an example. Here we have, this one is called, so the molecular geometry in this case is tetrahedral. Here, the molecular geometry would be trigonal pyramidal. You can kind of see how this would be the point of a pyramid and then these three would be pointing, would be pointing downward in a, in, a, in a pyramid shape. Let's take off one more pair of electrons or change one pair of another pair of electrons to a, from a bonding pair to a non-bonding pair. So in this case, again, we have four pairs of electrons around the central atom. So the electron pair geometry, electron pair geometry is tetrahedral in each of these cases. But the molecular geometry is different. In this case, we're going to call it bent. What we have is all three of these atoms within the plane of the blackboard, and the molecule is slightly bent. In this, and, and in this case, we have one lone pair of electrons going into the table and one coming out at us. And again, I would encourage you to use gumdrops and toothpicks or marshmallows and toothpicks to make these shapes, make a tetrahedral shape, and you'll see how the uh, actual shapes work. One thing I want to point out here in this case is that um, lone pair repulsions cause different smaller, in this case, bond angles. When we looked at the bond angles in a tetrahedral geometry, each one of these bond angles is 109.5 degrees. Using the idea of Vesper, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, if you recall, lone pair bonding pair repulsions are going to be greater than bonding pair bonding pair repulsions. So the repulsion between this pair of electrons here and and this pair of electrons here is going to be greater. This, this, pair, this, this repulsion is going to be greater than this one. And so what happens then is the angle changes. So the angle between the hydrogen-nitrogen-hydrogen angle in ammonia is 106.7 degrees. Something similar happens here, and that's because the, the, the lone pairs, essentially they take more space and they're able to push down the hydrogens to a larger degree. 
and it makes an, an imperfect tetrahedral shape. With the bent shape, here we have two lone pairs of electrons. They're pushing down, so the, the lone pair, lone pair repulsion is greater than bonding pair, bonding pair repulsion. So the, the lone pairs are going to be further apart from one another. But that's going to make this angle, so this angle is going to be larger than 109.5. This angle is about, happens to be, if you can measure it, about 104.5 because the, the bonding pairs of electrons have sort of pushed these together more. So th this is something to keep in mind when we have um, these, these uh, different shapes with, with lone pair electrons in them. Let's think about five pairs of electrons. So in this case, the electron pair geometry, I'll abbreviate it EPG, the electron pair geometry in this case would be trigonal, bipyramidal, excuse me, So we have a trigonal bipyramidal electron pair geometry. One example would be with P, we saw this one earlier, Cl5. So here we're looking at the molecular geometry. So the molecular geometry is going to be here, in this case, trigonal bipyramidal. Now let's take off varying or increasing numbers of bonding pairs. This one sort of makes a seesaw structure, and again, it's maybe difficult to be able to actually visualize it. Um, I'll show you in a moment where this sort of comes from. If we have two bonding pairs of electrons, or non-bonding pairs of electrons and three bonding pairs, we get a molecule that's T-shaped. So what we have here is all of these atoms in this molecule are in the plane of the paper that we have here. So you make a perfect T. And these two are um, in and coming out at us. So this would be PCO5, this would be SF4, this would be BRF3, and finally XEF2 would look like this. We have three non-bonding pairs of electrons and two bonding pairs. So this would be a linear shape. All of these are in the same plane. So the lone pairs in this case um, occupy the equatorial rather than the axial positions. So five pairs of, of electrons, the electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, and the molecular geometry was going to, name of it is going to depend on the number of bonding pairs and lone pairs that are there. Let's do the same thing for six pairs of electrons. So in this case, the electron pair geometry, electron pair geometry, is octahedral. We had as an example so the molecular geometry is octahedral. In this example SF6 we saw this one last time. So the molecular geometry is octahedral 
if all of the pairs of electrons are bonding pairs of electrons. Let's remove in the molecule IF5 what we have is one lone pair of electrons And this sort of makes a square with a pyramid. And so this is called square pyramidal. So the molecular geometry would be square pyramidal. The electron pair geometry would be octahedral. Electron pair, count the electron pairs. Molecular geometry is, would be this. What we have is all of these atoms are in the same plane and this one is sticking up, so you can imagine a square pyramid. Um, a square, a pyramid with a square base. In the molecule XeF4, you would draw the Lewis structure and come up with that as the best structure. Again, the electron pair geometry is octahedral. But in this case, the Molecular geometry, taking into account the atoms, is square, planar. We have all of these within the same plane, and then above and below the axis would be these two pairs of electrons. So the molecular geometry is determined from the atomic positions only whereas the electron pair geometry takes into account everything. So, so that's the differences between these things. And again, what I'm going to recommend you do is go to your textbook. And within your textbook, this is figure 10.4 in your text figure 10.4, and you can see, so, so here we have the, a number of electron pairs. The total electron pairs would be, say, for example, three or four. If the total number of electron pairs are bonding pairs, the electron pair geometry is given is the same, trigonal planar, tetrahedral. If, if we remove bonding pairs of electrons and make them lone pairs because of a different molecule, then the shape of the molecule changes. These pictures, these images are pretty good about giving you a 3D image. And again, please go and try to make these with some marshmallows and toothpicks. It really helps. Sometimes it's hard to, to visualize these things. There's another one also. This is figure 10.8 from your textbook, which shows us when we have five total pairs of electrons, or six total pairs of electrons, where the electron pair geometry is octahedral, or the electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. And then these would be the shapes of the molecules. So again, these are maybe a little bit easier to sort of maybe visualize as you're creating these structures on your own um, that can, can be helpful. Okay, so that's figure uh, 10.4 and 10.8 in your textbook.